2-11, McKeese LLC, 900 Lakes Boulevard. It is currently CG, it has county utilities. This involves 1.07 acres, Mr. Hill. Thanks, sir. Again, this is a CG zone with conditions approved from 2014. Um, the applicant is requesting to remain CG zoning with the removal of four of those conditions um, outlined in your packet there, specifically conditions number four, which was a landscape berm on the eastern portion and southern portion property lines, condition eight, and architectural design standards, uh, condition number nine, the dumpster location, and condition number 11 regarding light pollution. Uh, again, you, you see that here it is commercial zoning. Future land use map does depict it as established residential, and there are no wetlands on the property to speak of. <coughs> this is the proposed site plan for the development. You can see the proposed parcel there outlined in red. This is a view currently from Lakes Boulevard of said property, and then we're going to take a quick walk around the property. This is approximately standing where that red star is through the drive through, looking towards the southeast, towards the neighborhood. Those red dash are the property lines, approximately. Again, this is the southwest corner of the proposed property, looking back towards the neighborhood. And again, the southeast corner looking back towards the existing family dollar. Now we go to the immediate property corner adjacent to the uh, sole residence abutting this property. And again, approximately halfway out, looking back down. The planning commission was split on this, recommending approval overall, but a 5 4 1 abstention. And I've heard from the applicant's representation that they have met with property owners on the property, and the current owner of the Francis Lake Golf Course is proposing uh, additional buffering on the south property line via uh, vegetative landscaping uh, buffer. Uh, they may have reached some sort of agreement outside of my knowledge for additional fencing or particular types, and I believe some of those requests have been submitted back to the Dairy Queen corporate, as this is a franchise, and thus the reason for some of those conditions being removed. Generally, I understand that there are uh, petitions of support and opposition for this particular case, but I have not been presented with either of them. Any questions for Mr. Dillon? Um, I saw the uh, sign out there, but it, it looked like it was on the culture side. It looked like it was out the part of the property of the, uh, I guess, golf course versus the open area uh, for the notice. The, there were two notices. The, the next case, which was actually withdrawn, was in the cul-de-sac. And that was for the three adjacent properties to the east. This particular one was on the Lakes Boulevard side property, um, facing south, for this notice. But, the, but there was another sign a little further down Lakes Boulevard for the separate case. But that, so that's a separate case altogether. That's a separate case number twelve, and it, it was it is actually been withdrawn. Jody, can we talk just a minute about the, the there's four conditions that they're requesting be removed, not all. That is correct. And, and the four are, I don't want to put you on the spot, but just can we go through those real quick just and make sure I understand. So the, the number four, uh, one of four, number four is the eastern property line, but this is regarding the berm. And, correct. And it's unrealistic to, to think that you can do a 50 foot wide berm and still develop the property, right? Correct. And I don't want to oversimplify it, but then okay, the next one is the, the 10% of the exterior wall building is talking about the facade of the structure. And, and that's dictated by the franchise company. Correct, they have requested that be removed because it does the architectural features don't meet their franchise model. Okay, all right. And then I understand the dumpster, which it says 200 feet from any residential property line, there's no way they can do that. Correct, the lot itself is only about 150 feet wide. And then 11 is regarding light pollution. How are they proposing? I mean, we can't just, I mean, we've got to be compassionate, empathetic, and understanding about how how that light in the back of this building affects those residential areas. So what are they proposing on that? Do you know, or should we ask? I say, I do know, if you can see the site fence is the largest. Uh, down in the southeast corner there, you see the 13, uh, the burnham, and there's a stormwater detention there proposing additional landscaping beyond the stormwater management area. Um, this is just for the site plan, but then I believe the applicant or the owner of the golf course is also proposing additional landscaping south of that um, to almost include all property to the, to the south and west um, for, for additional landscape buffering. I believe there was a, a headlight or a headlight 
concerns would be mitigated by the planting there. And then there was a request for something called dark lighting. I don't know if heard that term. I don't know if that's a street light or a particular model, but that was the, the phrase I heard the other day from the applicant's representation of dark lighting. I'm again not familiar with that term, uh, but it may be something shielded from uh, based on where the street lights were posed. And I understood that they were agreeing to the developer was agreeing to an eight foot privacy fence with landscaping on both sides of that fence. So headlight issue or whatever is will be out of the equation if that was the case, correct? That, that's my understanding based on this proposed additional landscaping buffer. So okay. Thank you. I appreciate you going through those. I just want to make sure I understood. So the firm would be replaced by a solid wood fence or plastic. And, and no paint fence. Eight yeah. foot. So no light would penetrate the fence. No car lights. No headlights at least, right. yes, sir. That's and my and understanding. Shrubbery in addition to that. In addition to that, yes, sir. Plus the existing vegetation, uh, which may be on the adjacent property. Because the lighting issue seems to me to be kind of simple, just to face those lights in and toward the building. If you're able to control that. They can be shielded away from residential areas, yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? 